Hi, I'm Margaret Dam, Head of Special Collections at the University of Iowa Libraries. Today I'll be talking about the Correspondence Archive in the Ruth and Marvin Safner Archive of Concrete and Visual Poetry. The Correspondence Archive consists of approximately 30 binders of correspondence between the Safners and many artists and curators and scholars who are interested in using or being a part of their collection over the years. First, I'm going to abridge a bit from our exhibit catalog because I think it's important to understanding the background of the Correspondence Archive. The Sackner Archive contains the largest collection of concrete and visual poetry in the world and was founded in 1979 in Miami Beach, Florida. The archive contains over 75,000 items, including books, periodicals, typewritings, drawings, letters, print portfolios, ephemera, rare and out of print artist books and more and includes multiple 20th century avant-garde art movements but it also includes evidence of social movements gender studies and technological advances this latter part is what really stands out to me what can we learn from looking at the archive as a whole as a reflection of cultural values worth and individual perceptions at a certain point in time that is the archive part of the Sackner archive at least as i understand it when I first began talking to Marvin Sackner about bringing the archive to Iowa, he made an offhand comment that his and Ruth's correspondence with the creators of the material in the archive and the records of his and Ruth's loans to other institutions didn't need to come with the rest of the collection. I probably worried him a little bit with the vehemence of my response. This seemed to me like the heart of the collection. Captured in the correspondence archive was the written intent of many of these artists when they created their works. Ruth and Marvin commissioned works directly from artists, sometimes for an exhibit like The Beauty of Breathing, but sometimes just for themselves and their archive. Some of the works featured in the 2020 exhibit, like the eponymous Sackner Archive piece by Tom Phillips that hung in the front case, were both commissioned and inspired by the Sackners. Some of the, these artists, like Tom, were friends with the Sackners for decades. Entire lifetimes play out in the letters they sent back and forth. Even the more mundane letters capture details of potential interest, the reception of an exhibit in a certain gallery, the feelings of an artist after traveling to a certain area. Each artist segment of the correspondence archive usually begins with a letter from Marvin. He diligently copied each one to ensure that both sides of the communication would survive. We can trace the Sackner's relationship with each artist, like in this letter from Dr. Sackner to John Furnival, written on February 25th, 1980. Dear John Furnival, I am writing to you as a mutual friend of Tom Phillips and Marty Ackerman and Jean Brown. As you can see from the listing of our archive of visual and concrete poetry, I have a number of books and prints of yours. I also have a drawing of yours entitled The Dark Lady by the Dark Town, which I purchased from Marty Ackerman. I would like to obtain other work in this field that you have published. Later in the correspondence, we learn that the bedspread created by the Furnivals featured prominently in the Sackner living room in this letter from 1983, dated in January 18th by Marvin Sackner. I want to let both of you know that in terms of the visitors that come to our home, both your works are highlights. We now keep the bedspread in the living room draped over the couch. Because of the construction, the panels are in the area toward the back of the house where we have the television set. We feel proud to have the works as part of our collection. In the correspondence, Marvin Sackner also describes expansions to their apartment. He states, we are presently involved in building a gallery and library addition. It is an expansion of the billiard room as you came into the house when you left. It began in August and it is heading toward completion. The ceiling height is 17 feet at the highest point and slopes down to 11 feet with ample room for books both on the ground level and in a loft space. We plan to install John's panels in the gallery. This really gives a great idea of how the Sackners lived with the archive and how the archive was situated in their home. To get back to quoting from the exhibit catalog, the archive has been open for decades to researchers who contacted Dr. Marvin Sackner directly to request access. The Sackners Home Suite Museum served a dual purpose as their daily lives were integrated with their art. Researchers regularly had lunch prepared by the Sackners, surrounded by the material they studied. This captures another element of the archive, which also features in the correspondence, albeit more subtly. Many artists and scholars visited Ruth and Marvin in their home suite museum and left behind traces of their visits and their letters. 
Others expressed a wish to visit, which they never had a chance to fulfill. I hope they will now. In special collections, we have our own version of the correspondence archive in something called the administrative files. These files are not 100% available to the public as many of them contain patron records, which are restricted by law. So I definitely should have expected some of what I found in the correspondence archive, which will mean that we cannot yet make this series fully available to the public. First, the work of a processing archivist must take place. Confidential records, including such details as bank account numbers and credit card numbers, need to be filtered out. Letters, which the Sackners tucked into plastic sleeves throughout, sorted by the last name of the artist, need to be rehoused. As you can see, the binders that at one point earlier in the life of the archive may have been sufficient for the contents are now exploding. The archive must also be described with artists and correspondence states named in a finding aid. We in Special Collections look forward to sharing this correspondence archive with you once the processing work has been completed. Thank you for joining us today.